We'll take a look at the markets. Well, they all share about 800 points up from yesterday's heavy losses. Uh, the mining and resources shares swinging well into the positive today, with the RAND uh, unfortunately weakening further against the U.S. dollar. Gary Boyson from RAND Swiss, thanks indeed for talking to us. I mean, we'll get to the local market in a moment, Gary, but let's start with the international scene. What's interesting is that despite the global vaccine programs uh, having progressed quite significantly, there's still a lot of worries about the impact of the Delta variant. And you see this effect on the international markets. Oh, so in the last couple of days, we've seen he heavy selling. We we're getting a little bit of a rebound today, as I think those, those fears are, are, are just starting to settle a little bit. Uh, so we've got the U.S. markets up, uh, or S&P 500, up over 1% at the moment. So uh, that helping to lift us. And our market also had a, a fairly good day. But, uh, yeah, it's really dominated, uh, certainly trading over the last couple of sessions. Just the, the idea that the Delta variant is a, is a little bit more... Um, virulent and, uh, you know, the vaccines are not quite as effective uh, as, as people had hoped. And I think there's real fear from the financial market that uh, that we could see, you know, economies heading back into more stringent lockdowns, which would obviously hamper economic activity. Those, as I said, though, those fears do seem to be allayed today, and, and we're seeing a little bit of green on the screens for a change. Yeah, I mean, uh, why then was the uh, local uh, all share uh, so far into the green today? I mean, uh, everyone concerned about the investments over the past week, but I, I suppose they would be happy with today's performance. And I see those mining and resources shares really, really gaining some ground after yesterday's performance. Yeah, so overall, the all share index up 1.27%, uh, but uh, as you said, really bolstered by the, the resource index. So we had uh, the RESI up 2.29%. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, been, a lot of the heavy lifting being done by Sasol, which uh, is benefiting from slightly higher oil prices after, uh, after that OPEC plus uh, agreement, which, uh, you know, was, was uh, I suppose, indicated that we were going to get a little bit more oil onto the market. And at the same time, we were worried about uh, the coronavirus taking some of the demand out of the markets. Now, oil has been under a lot of pressure, but just, just managing to rally today as people realize that, uh, you know, the, the, the U.S. is still looking very robust. We get it, it, it is predicted that we'll have the ninth week of drawdowns on U.S. oil inventories. Um, so supply is still very, very tight, and, and that just helping to rescue the oil market. Mm -hmm. That lifting Sassel up about 5%. Uh, but we also saw a good day from the platinum miners. Uh, saw Amplats up uh, almost 3%. We had, had Billiton up uh, over 3%. It obviously got that oil component as well, mm -hmm. but also coming out with an update around iron ore uh, production in Australia, looking very, very robust. And uh, so is the idea is if, if uh, the, the world starts uh, getting back to work, uh, commodity prices are going to rise. Yeah. It wasn't just commodities, though. We had the Finney and the Indy almost up a percent each. So, so overall, a fairly good day on the local exchange. Gary, so, so companies slowly releasing official accounts of those damages related to last week's looting. And I see Growth Point today saying seven of their properties were damaged in KZN. I mean, they are a significant play on the JC. No, absolutely. It's our, our biggest list of property stock. And I think property is, is one of the areas that, that people are concerned about. The, the first concern was the retailers. And as you say, it's, it's been a slew of updates from all the companies just, just trying to telegraph to the market how much damage and, and what kind of financial impact this is going to have on our big listed company. So we had pick and pay today. We've had shop wipes out as well. We missed the price uh, saying you know, 109 of the roughly 1,600 stores have been affected, uh, which represents about 7% of the company. But the you know, growth point coming out today and just uh, highlighting, as you said, se seven of their properties in KwaZulu-Natal, no properties any, any of the other provinces were affected. And this only represents about 2.3% uh, of their gross level area in, in South Africa. So, you know, one of the, the messages that I'm certainly getting from, from all these updates is that you know the the, the listed businesses are, are going to come through this fairly fairly well you know their, their ability to access capital markets they have deep pockets they can ride through this kind of storm and it's really the mom and pop shops it's the it's the independents that are going to take the brunt of the pain uh, of the violence and the looting that we've seen over the last week the JSC stocks uh, because of the access to capital markets are largely going to be fine it's going to take some rebuilding it's of course unfortunate but uh, the share price is reflecting that uh, these the companies that are going to survive and hopefully thrive in the future. Yeah, and the sad thing there is that most of the jobs are in that small business space. So before I, I let you go, just very quickly, a few seconds. Uh, Bezos is in space. What's so significant and interesting about this, Gary? Well, it's, it's, yeah, we, we all watched the launch this afternoon, and uh, 
It, it's interesting. So I think uh, SpaceX has probably done a lot more, but it, it does uh, kind of open up the idea of space tourism and low suborbital tourism, uh, which I think is, is particularly exciting. Uh, you know, Jeff Bezos obviously has this whole idea that uh, we're going to move a lot of the uh, very polluting industries, you know, off planet eventually, uh, and he sees this really as as a step uh, to paving the way to a, to a space faring future. Um, to me, it looked like a jaunt of a, a very rich billionaire wanting to fulfill a child. The dream, but uh, you know, it's, it's always good. Hopefully, it did uh, you know, advance uh, hu humankind's uh, ability to, to one day become a space traveling people. Yep, yeah, indeed. Gary Boyson from Rand Swiss, thanks very much indeed for those insights. Uh, so, one 